One of the biggest questions in, in the neurobiology of memory is to try and find where memories are, to see some sort of physical representation in the brain of a memory being formed. And the cellular resolution that we have in the fly allows us to pinpoint handfuls of neurons where these memories might be stored and formed. And so that's one of the things we're trying to do. So the new area of neural transposition uh, really came through the back door. We were looking for molecules that potentially were involved in coding memories in different subsets of neurons in the fly brain by gene profiling. And whilst looking through the huge data set, it was quite clear that transposable elements, mobile genetic DNA elements, were present at high levels in those samples. And so it was really driven by the data in front of me. Uh, and I think it's always important to follow the data rather than some preconceived notion. It was true that the elements were mobile in the brain. Dogma for many years has largely been that the, the genome in every cell other than the immune system is the same. And what this suggests is that in the neurons in which the transposons are mobile, the genome will be radically different from neighboring cells, from other brain regions perhaps, and certainly from the germline, from the heritable genome. Two flies that we think should behave identically clearly don't, and maybe this is one of the contributing factors for why they behave differently, why one flies happy and the others not. And these are things that people have been aware of for a long time, but it's not clear where that variability comes from in a fly that we think is the same as its sister. Ce qui m'a plu dans la recherche de Scott, c'est qu'il ose euh, aller dans des, euh, dans des contrées de recherche que, dont personne ne veut euh, forcément aller et donc euh, qui sont très risquées, mais qui sont du coup aussi intéressantes. Et euh, je pense que du coup, ouais, c'est encore une fois quelque chose donc on essaie de s'inspirer euh, tous ici dans son laboratoire. It was evening and I was bathing my daughter and uh, my cell phone rang. Uh, it was Spears Artavanus telling me that I was the recipient of the award and I was extremely surprised, <laughs> very surprised, very happy too. So the award of course gives us f extra funds to hire more people and to do more experiments. I think it will revolutionize that part of the lab just by injecting more resources, hopefully bringing more smart people to uh, contribute to the project. The benefits of understanding the cause and consequence of transposition, um, I think, are many. One of the ideas is that this might um, contribute to behavioral difference. I think to find that that was true would be a fairly radical finding. If it turns out to be involved in age-dependent cognitive decline and neurological disorders, I think that would also be very important. Nowadays, in neurobiology, often a tendency to do extremely technically demanding and complicated experiments. And Scott is quite the opposite. He does deceptively simple and clear experiments that dazzle with the originality of the ideas. So in his case, um, it's always the concept uh, that takes center stage. And that's what impressed me um, from the first time I read a paper of his. One of my colleagues once said that we're very lucky because we basically just go to the lab and have fun. Um, I think it's true that one of the great things about it is that you're trying to discover things. You know, there's a, there's a childlike element to that. You know, you're looking, looking for new, new things, things that we don't know. Um, that to me is the essence of science. 